It's very tricky. Working in Japan, reporting your headquarters overseas to a boss who doesn't know Japan. There are so many things here which are so special and unique and very hard to make people outside of Japan with no great experience with Japan understand what's different. You constantly run into problems with headquarters which basically drive you crazy. This is an area where headquarters doesn't understand Japan, puts a lot of stress on us trying to run businesses here. Find out more about that in today's episode. Welcome back. This weekly edition every Monday of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy, president of Dale Cunningham Training Japan and best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery and my new bestseller, Japan Business Mastery. We are bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minato-ku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? In this show, we are looking at the critical areas for success in business in Japan. We want to help advance everyone's thinking so that we can all be at the forefront, the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. Before we get into this week's topic, here's what caught my attention lately. Japan's younger workforce's level of satisfaction with their job is lower in Japan at 47% than in the US at 82%, Germany at 80%, France at 76%, Britain at 74%, Sweden at 70%, and South Korea at 53%. The 2015 International Social Survey showed that in Japan, those who find their job interesting accounted for some 20% compared to the US, Germany, and Norway, where the ratio was over 80%. Japanese workers' stress levels were higher than in other countries. They were also less willing to make extra efforts to learn skills and engage in personal development. Finally, in 2018, bullying cases at Japanese schools was up 31% from the year before. Total cases numbered 553,933. Serious cases involving broken bones and school absences longer than 30 days rose to a record 602, up 128. Elementary school cases were the most numerous at 425,000. 844 or 78%. Junior high schools were at 21%, they're up 21%, to 97,704 cases. High schools had 17,709 cases. Ridicule and slander accounted from between 50 to 70% of cases. Cyberbullying accounted for 16,334 cases and about 20% of the cases for high schools. A total of 333 students committed suicide, up 82 on the previous year. This is episode number 114, and we are talking about Headquarters Never Understands Japan. Sore dewa ikimashou. So let's get going. One of the dubious delights of running an international business in Japan is dealing with the mothership or its regional hub spin-off. Trying to explain Japan to those who don't know Japan has always proven tremendously character building for me. Having left the corporate treadmill to work for myself, I mistakenly thought I'd kiss goodbye to all that pathetic nonsense. Alas, the long arm of Japan ignorance continues to reach out and challenge me. Today, I live the frustration vicariously 
through my clients here in Japan who have to deal with their own version of hell. Headquarters or regional hub no nothings located outside Japan. Joint ventures and partnerships are a fun feast. Japan is low on the detailed contractual side of the equation. The basic idea in Japan is we don't need reams of lawyer speak because the venture will be a success or it won't be a success based on how well we can trust each other and work collaboratively. If it doesn't work out, then we should both walk away and not bother with courts, litigation, claims and compensation. We need to focus on the bigger picture of success and how to achieve that and so a handshake is all we need. I was reminded of this recently when I was contemplating buying a marketing service from a US based company. They kindly sent over the agreement, pages of lawyerese, barely penetrable, thick and dense to the point of physical pain wading through it. In Japan, we have very few written agreements with our clients. We agree on the training, deliver as agreed, and we receive payment in a timely fashion, all off a handshake. We haven't encountered any issues after 57 years operating here, but if we do, I am sure we will discuss and agree on a mutually suitable solution. So, a typical day in the life of the Japan rep is explaining to headquarters why the Japan business is not tracking as expected when the agreement was concluded. In one client's case, the original expectations proved to be a misalignment of skill sets and targets. The Japanese side had the sales force to cover the market, but it proved not the expertise to cover it appropriately. Sales were uninspiring compared to the original business plan expectations. What was the mothership solution? Fly in the Americans from headquarters to berate the Japanese side at the board meetings about Japan's poor sales performance. Shame them into action to sell something. The local representative was encouraged to keep the pressure on by using these same name and shame tactics in the interim between board meetings. The verbal beatings will continue until morale improves type of approach. The American headquarters led strategy was going down a treat with local Japanese partners, of course, as the trust and collaboration rapidly disintegrated. Training delivered locally to those selected from within the existing sales force was the better solution. This sounds like a logical step, but convincing headquarters to do so was painstaking. The headquarters view was to send in trainers from the regional hub to do the training. Regional hubs in APAC usually mean Singapore or Hong Kong. Find out more when we come back from the break. If you want to sell more and do it more easily, do the Winning with Relationship Selling course. If you can't build trust, no sale. Can't design excellent questions to understand the client's needs, no sale. Can't present the solution convincingly, no sale. Can't handle objections properly, no sale. Can't close, no sale. Master the sales process by doing the Winning with Relationship Selling course now in either Japanese or English. The best seller, Japan Sales Mastery, is the new Bible of selling in Japan. To sell to Japanese buyers, you need to create long-term partner-level trust, fully understand Japanese buyers' real needs, convince buyers with your solutions, overcome their hesitation, fear and doubt, know how to ask for the order, ensure repeat orders. This book is the product of 30 plus years in the trenches selling in Japan. Order Japan Sales Mastery now. Welcome back. Who do they choose to send to Japan? The HR team is the preferred option 
which excitingly usually means a rapid fire, fast talking Chinese team member to come to Japan and conduct the training in English. It's okay, the team can speak English, is how headquarter types see it whenever the language and cultural issues are flagged locally. That English capability assumption would be extremely optimistic in my experience. Just as a snarky side note, the people recommending these courses of action are often monolinguals, sometimes not even possessing a passport. Machine gun English combined with an unfamiliar Chinese accent and no cultural sensitivity is just one of those genius solutions headquarters unleashes on the innocent and blameless. Even when native speakers of English are sent in from overseas, they tend to speak too quickly, use too many idioms, confuse with incomprehensible jokes and wordplay, apply content recalling acronyms that can't actually be recalled and have a zero idea what is really going on in the class in that dynamic. During role plays in English for teams whose clients are Japanese, this has got to be one of the most brazen breakthrough headquarters inspired ideas in a generation. The language of persuasion is brimming with semantic options, which unsurprisingly need to be in the buyer's language. How we say it is much more important than what we say. Salespeople practicing sentence construction in English so that the instructor can understand is dumb and pointless. I was teaching a relationship selling class recently in English with one very international Japanese salesperson in the class. He correctly told me that there was no point in him doing the sentence formulation exercise in English because his clients are all Japanese firms. We switched over to Japanese and worked on helping improve his unique selling proposition for his client base. If we are dealing with a mixed audience of English and Japanese speakers, then bilingual trainers are a must. The alternative is to waste the time of the Japanese staff just to serve the English speakers' requirements. Sounds very 19th century colonial in approach to me. English comprehension between 50 to 60 percent is the maximum we can probably expect up until about lunchtime after which rates rapidly spiral down. This is not a very effective way of training local staff in Japan. Delivering the training in the mother tongue with the required cultural understanding is at least the baseline. On top of that, having trainers who are highly skilled is where the leverage can really be applied. Headquarters wacky ideas are often amusing, at least for the first 15 seconds of hearing them, but the global training approach has proven fraught with failure. The training was completed, check mark the box, is not an outcome. Taking the training and applying it to deliver higher productivity is the only acceptable outcome. A bit difficult though when you couldn't understand most of it in the first place. Globally delivered training in English rarely produces any residual value for companies and you have to wonder why headquarters keeps repeating the same mistake. It doesn't have to be like this. Time for the organization to wake up, wise up and listen to their local reps advice on what works best in Japan. Action steps. Understand it is difficult to apply a heavily legalistic approach in Japan. It doesn't work the same way here. Number two, publicly berating the Japanese side over their performance is not going to improve anything. Three, deliver training in the local language whenever possible. Number four, semantics matter in sales training, so English won't work for teams who sell in Japanese. Five, use highly talented trainers if you want to achieve leverage. Number six, 
headquarters, listen to your local rep on what they're saying and follow their advice about Japan. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show is here to help you succeed in Japan. Subscribe on YouTube, share with your family, friends and colleagues. Become a regular. Thank you for watching this episode and remember to hit the subscribe button. Our website details are on screen now, enjapan.dalecunny.com. Awesome value, so check it out. Please leave me some feedback on YouTube. I would love to know how this show has helped and what other topics you're interested in for me to cover. Remember, I am here as a free resource to help you. So just tell me how I can help you best. You might also enjoy my other weekly shows. For a podcast, Mondays for the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast version. Tuesdays for the Presentations Japan series. Wednesdays for the Sales Japan series. Thursdays for the Leadership Japan series. And Fridays for the Japan Business Mastery show, wherever you get your podcasts. Also, on Fridays, I release my other TV show, the Japan Business Mastery show on YouTube. In episode 115, we are talking about how surprisingly smart people are often clueless at presenting. Find out more about that next week. So, yoroshiku, onegai itashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you, and we have only got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up.